Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and in today's episode we're going to be working on a little Mountfield lawn mower. Um, it came in as part of a job lot but was missing the box, uh, missing half the handlebars and um, I think I have had it running but I think it's a carburetor issue as well. And I've just picked up that Mountfield and uh, FS38 as well, I'll have a quick look at them. Um, but I want to get this little tiny Mountfield running because it is a little plastic deck one so they're quite light and people around my way sort of like them because they've got small properties with small gardens so we'll have a look at that. So without further ado let's get down and dirty and let's check out this little Mountfield lawn mower. Right here's the Mountfield, it's a Mountfield 414 um, push mower with an RS100 lump on the top. I've put some petrol in it, it is priming, you can hear it, it's missing some of the handlebars and what have you. And that's all we're getting out of that one and uh, I do have a donor one around the side for that so that's cool. This one, you may have, if you look back at some of my videos, this one appeared last year. Uh, belongs, it belonged to a grass cutter, he's now packed up. It's quite an old engine as well, 1983 I think it is. Um, he said he didn't winterise it or nothing like that. I just put some petrol in it. It's an electric start as well. Just put some petrol in there. And uh, he also sold me this uh, FS38, which I put petrol in again, uh, but it's, it's just blowing bubbles in the tank, so the fuel hoses are gone. And they have a little tiny green hoses on these, and I'm sure, I'm positive, I've got a spare hose for that in my shed. So these two, that would be a service, um, battery charge and what have you, and that should be up and running again. Um, looking forward to doing that one. Uh, get the steel in as well, that's worth a few quid, and then this little mount field, I'll do it today. I'm sure, if I come around here, positive, I have one. Yeah, I have. So there's one there, it's got the handlebars on it. Uh, it's sort of a drive one, possibly, but I can adapt it. Uh, but it's got a grass bag, which I need, and uh, I've got a few parts there which I can, I can use. So hopefully, we could be on to a winner. So what I'm going to do first is get that mower out, uh, take the handlebars off of it so the, end, the mower is complete and then get it up in the bench and we'll go from there. Right, I've got the donor, the donor one through. That can go on the mirror. Now unfortunately, this handle, that'll be all right for that one, but that's got a bit of a bend in it. So I might have to replace the top section as well. keep this cable let me get undo that because that's gonna go on my new on my new handlebars obsolete <coughs> and I want this 
one off. I think the reason I am um, not using this one is this one's got a uh, broken drive on it. Gearbox is gone and it outweighs the cost. So let's now remove the drive. That can go onto there. Happy with that one. a bit tight, I might be able to get one of plastic covers off the mount fields for that. Go on to there. I'll probably go on to that one. too tight so they break okay just gotta sort this out I want some washer pot on it or something just to pack it out it's not quite coming in as far as I would like it's a bit long let's try that Let's get it on the bench. Okay, so now I've got the handlebars all complete. It's got an air filter in there, which is cool. How old is this one? This one's 2015 model. Not that old, but it's suffering with a fuel problem. Now I've had about six of these in this year, and they're all hunters. They're all hunting issues. Them. I don't want to come out of here. There it goes. Now, how's that join? That should be like a little tiny air breather pipe on the back of that. Which goes on the top of the carburetor. You can see it if you go just poke your head around the side when you have a look at it. It just literally pops off and it's been held on by the air breather pipe. That's what's holding it actually on. Which is well on there. I don't want to break it. So just take your time, remove the air breather pipe off the back, which has now come off. If you swing it round, and you'll be able to see there's a there's a little tiny breather pipe on the on the uh, primer bulb with a little tiny clip. Remove the clip and remove that. That will come off. So that's good. That one's a bit of a clean. A little gasket on there as well, some little collars. Fuel. Now, I don't know what fuel's in this. I did put some fresh in, but I suspect it wants a bit of a fuel, fuel um, rinse because uh, it's been sat for a little while, this one. So plug the fuel off, grab some long nose pliers. I'm really enjoying using my newer ones. Take that off. We've got a little rod to remove. 
and a spring as well. And that should, I don't want to take that plate with me, that should then give me the carb. I would like to keep the gasket where it was if possible, but I don't want to split it. If it had come, yeah, it's coming. Nice and gently, that's it. That can stay on. Got to clean that up. All right, let's um, get this off and have a look inside this carburetor and see what's going on. Here's the carb. That's what comes out of the bottom of this. Bit of water in there and some congealed fuel as well in that one. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Got another main jet in there to remove as well. A bit of cum. I don't always just go easy with these. And then there's a, I've got the main jet out, and there's one in there, there's a little tube as well that pops out. Let's just check out that main jet. <laughs> yeah, there's a lovely big hole in there. So if all of you one of these that are plugged, now I do have a little bit of WD-40 left, not a great deal. But it should be enough, literally just to Starting clean in here, that's running out the back, I can see it. That's running out the top, I can see it. Yeah. I'm getting here as well. There's not one in the side there, but there is normally on, on other ones. I'll take that out. Give it a good soak over WD-40, and this can go back into my cleaner because uh, it's particularly dirty. So that's, uh, that's about 20 pass, give or take, somewhere there. So wind that all the way in. One, two, three, four, about four and a half, four and three quarters. Jewel in there. Also, there's a little bit of rubber seat in there. I can see. Though the oven is gone, I had a problem there. It is there. See it there? It just popped out. Let me try and fish that out. I see it somewhere. I see it in there. That's what made me think. I can just make it out. I have to get something really fine, but just in there is a little tiny o-ring which sits on the end of this piece here. And uh, it's not doing its job. Let me try and fish that out. I'm grab my files and use one of the thinnest ones possible. Just to get hold of it if I can. There it goes. And that little tiny washer or o-ring sits just on there like that just there right let me uh, get my cleaner all sorted out again I'm going to be filing through here they look quite clean I can see daylight all the way through them so I'm not quite sure as to why this, this carburetor has failed it's not showing anything that um, I'm not used to but uh, Let's get the ultrasonic cleaner fire back up, all cleaned out, ready for another session, and then um, we get it clean. Right, cleaner time again. Fresh water in. That carburetor's all taken apart. I can't do any more than that. I just want to give that a bit of a, um, a clean off with my old WD-40 spray. 
just get rid of any um, additional stuff on top. That way it keeps the water as clean as possible. Carburetor in. It's not quite enough there. Well, it might be better just like that, maybe. That'll do. I'm going to put a bit more water in there as well, just a, just a touch. That's all the float system. Let's plug her in. I'm going to just nip to the kitchen quickly and just get some more water ever so quickly. It can make a start, it's just I want to add a bit in. It's not quite got it. but uh, 64 degrees, I want 60. I've got to cool down a touch. Give that 15 minutes and I'll come back. Well, I don't know what the sound quality is going to be like with the ultrasonic cleaning on in the background. It may get on your nerves after a while, but uh, just want to get on and give us a service as well whilst we're here. Cool, these are absolute pigs to get off. That's it. I've got um, some of the newer style. Um, spark plugs. So I use the Briggs and Stratton ones on these. It's not a plug. It's just, uh, not a plug. <laughs> so I did there. Um, just had some really good results from them. So I dare say this is probably the shop manufacturer one they put in, which would not be a, a high quality one. No, it's a G GGP, whatever that is, K7RTC, and it's well mank. That, that's absolutely shot. So let me get a brick one in there. So they are quite expensive for what they are, but they do they do fire really well. It just help. So it is right. It is firing anyway but it's just literally just to help it out a touch. Um, we're going to gander up the oil as well. I want to check to see what the fuel looks like. That's my next job. See how we're looking. There's a bit of dirt in there already so give it a fair fair trial. Drain right out. Yeah it's yellow. That ain't very good. We'll have that out of there. Just drop me down the arm spring. Up in there. Well, that's the fuel drained out, and it is very, very yellow. So it's gone. You know, it's, it's had, it's, it's past its best. So we we'll get rid of that. Put it under my chair for now. I'll put it in the old tank. I've got a spare contained down the bottom here. Um, I will turn the machine round now. So I want to check the oil. So all is here. And it's a little yellow dipstick. And that's uh see how we're doing with oil. Again there's a minimum and maximum line on these. And it's, it says there will be uh oil marked on a dipstick with um SEA 30 or before starting. Let's see how we're getting on. I suspect it to be overfilled. Well, when you screw it all the way in, it's showing overfilled. If you push it in, it's showing overfilled. So it's well overfilled with oil. So that's what will come out. And here's one I made earlier. Yeah, absolutely full of oil. So I'll have this all out and then I'll come back to you. There's quite a lot in here, so give us two ticks. That's the oil now coming out. Just tip it up a touch if we can. Just to get it all out. A bit more of it.
That'll do. And whilst, oh, sorry, whilst that um, car barrette is still cleaning, it's got another three and a half minutes on the first side. I'm gonna put the dipstick back in and then tip it up right up on its side and uh, have a look, look at the old blade, see what the blade's doing. Just want to make sure I'm not going to lose any bits when I tip it up. It shouldn't do. Yeah, it should all be okay. Right, let's tip it up. Let's have a look under here. Yeah, the blade is not shocking, shocking. It's got a few nicks in it, but we'll have it off anyway. It's all in place on the pins and what have you. There's no oil coming off the bottom seal. It's all good to see. So let me grab my D-Walt and my 14 mil. The HTD is actually off, although it's got a new plug in it. That's the one. Let's uh, try that on there. There she goes. Have a look. Yeah, I want some new edge put on it. We we'll put a new edge on it. It's only a bit of, bit of dirt underneath here. Nothing, nothing massive. But I'll give it a jet wash off later on before I go to sell it anyway. It's all plastic, so it can't rust. Nothing like that. So I'll give the old blade a sharpen, and I'll come back. Right, carburetor is on uh, side number two. 15 minutes. That's been sharpened front and back. Doled off. That can go on. And that's that done. Nice, quick, easy, and simple. That's always easier when you've got the right tools. So that's that done. We can now put some more oil back in it and the correct amount. Let me get the rag. I'll probably end up spilling a load. Now I'm going to fill it up with the uh, dipstick in. It doesn't actually say like the Hondas where you just literally just dip it in like that. So I'm going to fill it up to uh, the maximum line with the uh, with the uh, dipstick in. It's not going to be easy. I'll get it filled up and I'll come back to you. It's going to take a little while to do it because of the angle of the uh, the funnel and what have you. But it'll be quite a slow sort of process. Well, that's it all now filled up <clears throat> to where it needs to be. So happy with that. I'm now going to go for a general clean using my trusty WD-40 spray. All over. Going to have a shag clean at some point. I keep on doing it, but it gets a bit much having to keep doing it. But I guarantee when I get my new store, it won't be anything like this. That's like quite new, doesn't it? That's like quite a nice little mower, it's all done, all polished up. Right, let me turn it round. So light. It's lovely. I'm going to do that with a 56. Right, the carburetor's got another eight minutes to go yet, so I'll probably have to come back once that's done. We'll reassemble the carburetor 
and uh, go from there. I've got to check the height adjustments yet, make sure they all work, all that sort of good stuff, and then uh, I'll come back to you all. Right, I've got the uh, carburetor out, the old uh, ultrasonic cleaner. That's all now done, and it looks really good, as usual. I mean, them, them cleaners are worth the money, in my opinion. Everything is absolutely spotless. So I'm just going to give it a quick compress off, rebuild the carburetor. I've got to get me other bits which I'll put to one side without losing anything. Yeah, one quick air compress off just to blow out any residual water that's it actually in there. Do it very quickly. So, tube in. Let's see daylight through all of them, can I? Actually, do you know what? I can't. I don't think. Oh, I can. Yeah, there's daylight in there. Yeah. Just a bit of residual water. Just double checking. Yeah, I can. All right. That goes in. That goes in. I want me uh, flat headed driver. Now, I must start using my carburetor one again. One I made. I keep going for that orange one all the time, but. I made this uh, this yellow colour one, which fits so much better. I keep forgetting I've got it. Do that up. I want the float and the pin. Let's just tip this lot up. There's a pin. a bit of crud just in there let me just blow that off ever so slightly just a very small piece of crud I don't want to be introducing anything back that's it it didn't want a lot that goes in put the old pin in quick blow test no air and air yeah, it's working. Bowl on, and I want to go that way, fuel in. So, have a little tiny 10 mil at the front, just so we can uh, flood the carburetor if needed. If we can't get enough fuel to come down, do that hand tight to begin with. And I'll put a 10 mil on there in a minute. In fact, I should have a 10 mil to hand, so I was using it earlier. On a previous mower, not too tight because you'll strip with threads. Right now, this little chappy here that's got a little tiny o-ring on it that was had become unseated. I'm convinced that was half the issue. Now that's really been reseated. What was this four and four and a half turns, somewhere like that? Was it? They all generally are. Wind it all the way in. That's better. All right. Open that up. Oh. Don't want to go in there. All of a sudden, it will just go. I think someone's been in here before. This arm is slightly bent. That's better. And that's why I was struggling. A little tiny um, spring to go on as well. Just close my little tiny hole, make sure that's all working and not caught up. That all goes in. And then don't forget when we hook the uh, carburetor back up, we've got this little tiny breather pipe here that goes onto this top of this one. And then the air breather pipe on the back, which goes onto this one here. So it's a bit of a combined effort. I'll go for this one first, which is your primer. It's got a little tiny metal clip to put on as well, which is quite straightforward to do. He says, as he struggles with his hands like a gorilla, switch it round, line it up with the carburetor holes, and then just as you push it in, you need to light the, the air intake pipe as well. Oh, hang on, I'm missing the gasket. And they're quite important to have on. Look up the old air intake, like that's all gone into place. Two little tiny metal collars that go on the studs just to keep that box centralised. 
where it needs to be. It's going to be a pickle to get in or get out. It might be just to drop it back a touch off of the stud until you can work it in. There's one. One down the bottom here, which is even worse access. That's right, they're both in. So the air breather pipe's come off at the back, and it's now on. That's all in place. Two turn mills. I'll use that screwdriver actually, rather than wire it in the old Dewalt. On there, one there, that's all in place now. I get a little bit of fuel just to run it in. So it's had a new spark plug, tank flush, oil change, blade sharp and balanced, carburetor ultrasonically cleaned. Let's put some fuel in nothing for task so I've got to run it up here as well I always like to run all my mowers up so I don't get an issue and no one comes back to me saying it broke down after three minutes it's quite important to run them up that's on I've got an air air filter to put on the air filter's not too bad actually I can keep that I don't generally keep these in the spares all the foam ones I just clean that goes in back into his little home. Just in there, air filter cover, which is that one. So that's it. That's job done. I say job done. Hopefully it'll run. But no leaks at the moment. You can see here at priming. Not yet. I'll bring some fuel down. Mm, can't hear it priming, but will I? Get it outside and have a look. Um, HT lead back on as well. The pull cord looked okay. Let's take it outside and try and fire it up. Right, there it is. It don't too bad. Let's give it a few pumps. Let's see what happens. It's a five ten minute test, um, so it comes out. I mean, I want to double check that oil as well afterwards, make sure that's uh, that's fine because I'm not convinced I've put enough oil in. But um, I'll give it a run until it gets on. It's got oil in there, so it's not the end of the world. But I just want to double check the levels. Okay, that's that little Mountfield lawnmower now up and running. And as you can hear in the background, it's ticking over nicely. It's done about four minutes so far, something like that. Um, I'll give it another about another four or five and um, so it gets on. Not hunting at all, it's not missing a beat, so quite happy. Um, on another note, I had, whilst I was waiting for the car break to be done, I was having a search around and I knew I had um, spare pipes for the FS38, so I have actually got them. So I knew I had one somewhere, so that would be in soon. I've got to do FS38, I've got another mountful electric start to sort out, and then I think I'm pretty much up, up to where I need to be, which is quite good. I've got one or two other mowers. We've got to pick a mower up tomorrow free of charge, which would be um, a trash pick mower. Someone's just going to chuck it away, so I'll have it. I don't know what condition it's in. It may just be a scrapper. I've got no idea at all, but I said I'll have it. I think that's a mount field, I think. I'm not sure what engine's on it, but I haven't even seen it. So that's cool. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Mixed Mowers. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. Um, if you did, don't forget to like the old video. Give it a thumbs up, all that sort of good stuff. Whack the old bell and subscribe to the channel if it's your first time. But until next time, don't forget, take it easy.